President Jason Wright, and you're listening to Ramblin' About Washington. What's going on, Washington Football Nation? It's your boy, Rio, and... We're back for another episode of Rambling with Rio. I got my guy Michael Haas in the building, and we're ready to talk some more quarterbacks. And QB one of the future, episode two. How you feeling right now, Mike? I'm feeling great, man. I'm, I'm glad to be on your show, man. I, I, I like kicking it with you. Oh yeah, yeah. It's always it's always a good time, good vibes, and we love talking about the quarterback position. And before we get to numbers three, four, and five, if you missed the first episode, go ahead and check it out. I'll link it in this video. We talked about Malik Willis and Matt Corral, who had very interesting weeks themselves. And speaking yeah. of interesting weekends, Taylor Heineke, I think I think he's show like if we needed any more evidence that this is not the long term solution here. Sunday, it was on full display versus the league's worst defense. Tell me about Heineke's game Sunday from your lens. What did you see from Taylor? It's just panic. Um, the one thing you notice on a fundamental uh, standpoint is his base is pretty good. This is not the problem with his base. One, the problem is his arm. Um, two oh, <laughs> is he has happy feet. When those reads aren't there, because he knows that playbook for Washington so well under Scott Turner. So he knows where those automatic reads are. When they're not there, they're not available, the happy feet starts, the pitter-patter, mm -hmm. pitter-patter, pitter-patter. And then when she does that, it's going to take an extra second or half a second to like go back into your, your base in order to, to, to really assert yourself to pass. Um, but with that said, the number one problem is the arm strength. He does not have an NFL arm. At the all. touch, the accuracy, it, it can work. But in order for it to be any type of effective on a, a consistent basis, he has to read the play and predict coverages. He has to throw the ball way before the break in order for it to be any type of outside throws. And notice what teams have been doing the last two weeks is, oh, we're gonna crowd the middle. Yep. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make sure the pocket squeezes in you so you can't get out mm -hmm. because he's great outside the pocket. Improviser. So, improvise, right? So they're gonna crowd the middle, force him to throw on the outside where he cannot throw on the outside. Anything a streak is different. I said this about Mac Jones. I said everybody talking about oh he doesn't have uh, his arms not weak, and I was like. They see the deep passes that he, he does. Arm strength has nothing to do with how far you can throw the ball. Yeah. It has everything to do with the the speed it takes to get from A to B. Mm -hmm. And I, I like I'm happy for uh for uh Alabama boy. I, I'm happy for and Mac Joe, my guy, my guy. Yeah, like because <laughs> he came, he went to a really good situation. Perfect where situation. New England. They focus their game plan on their running backs and tight ends. Mm -hmm. Running backs and tight ends, or running backs are usually going to be, if they're outside on flares, flares and wheels, those are more in the direct pattern of the quarterback. So it's not as far of a distance, right? Mm -hmm. Tight ends attack the middle of the field most of the time. Those are what Mac Jones are lethal at because his accuracy is incredible. He can attack the middle and, and those 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 routes by the running back. Yep, and so he's so decisive. He, he's so decisive. His process yeah. is very quick. And, and that's what he, Heineke's not. Yeah, <laughs> that's he's Heineke's like, not. he's yeah. an obsessive workaholic, and it shows yeah. on Sundays. That's why he's going to be able to be effective. Like we were talking in the first episode, when you have such a base level or less than base level NFL arm, you have to be perfect or it's yeah. not going to work. Drew Brees never had the strongest arm. But he's yeah. the smartest person on the field every Sunday. He yeah. always, he beats you with his mind and the ball is out before receivers come out of their break. And no question. that's what Heine Heineke left points on the board Sunday, man. I saw it up close. Oh every week, God. like every week he's leaving points on the board. And I, I get it. Diami dropped one, right? And, and 
I get it. That oh, happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's leaving points on the board consistently. A lot of people blame Scott. And Scott, he can do things a lot better. He can. There's no there's, there's no getting behind that, getting away from that. But he's given opportunities to, to Heineke, and he's just not doing it. Like, I feel bad for not Heineke because he is what he is. Yep. A quarterback I feel really bad for. And we talked about this before, um, Tua, man, because people are are giving up on Tua, especially like uh, fan wise. And it's absurd because Tua is in the most dysfunctional situation. And I don't mean dysfunctional franchise, mm -hmm. dysfunctional situations. They have three different people calling plays, yeah, three different wow. people. They don't know. <laughs> and none of them are catering things to to a strengths because mm -hmm. if you've seen Tua in college you know what he's strong at you have Jalen Waddle man move him around get him th the ball hot I said you have freaking Fuller who can take the top off off the keep defense safe yep. yeah keep the safeties back you have Gasecki who can open up the middle and then you have your big body and Parker who can who can you can give him those 50 50 balls they're not doing anything to help Tua. Nothing. And I feel so bad for him because I'm going to say this with confidence. If Tua would be the number three quarterback right now, if he came out right now. Um, mm. And the only reason why I have him number three is because the high, high ceiling of, um. of, of, of Corral and then the unlimited potential of Malik Willis. That's the only reason. Foundationally, he's better than mm -hmm. every one of the quarterbacks here. Every oh, 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 not even close. That's why, like, when there was, like, that rumor coming out from Miami that we'd be considering trading for Tua and everybody exactly. wanted to everybody wanted to poo-poo it. I'm a big Tua fan. And yeah. I say this without bias. Yeah. That process thing we were talking about with Heineke, Tua checks all of those boxes. Yep. Tua's process, he's mechanically sound as hell. He gets his hips and his feet around perfectly. He's Perfect. everything from a mechanical standpoint yep. that you'd want in a quarterback. He doesn't have top-end arm strength, but he has no. much more than Heineke. Like Absolutely. He has an, he still has an NFL arm. Heineke does Absolutely. Doesn't. Yep. So, but that's I wanted to mention that because like I've been thinking about it a lot the more and more I read the, the and evaluate these quarterbacks. Um, when it comes to, like, Willis, right? When I said that un he can transcend scheme, yep. he can. But you still have to spoon feed him at first, like the mm -hmm. uh, Josh Allen. Um, what they did with Kyler, even what they did with, with Lamar. Lamar's a little different because they could completely change everything for Lamar. Hell yeah. But with, with Josh Allen, think about where he's at. Willis can get there and even further. He can get there, but you have to spoon feed him a little bit. You mm -hmm. have to. You have to care because he is a he is a SEC, SEC uh, talent, one hundred percent. But he hasn't played in the SEC mm -hmm. on uh, at this level. Jumping to the pros is going to be completely different. So you have to spoon feed him a little bit. He's not like like, like Watson, where Watson like, hey, he was at Clemson, bro. He was. He was getting oh, yeah. at it. Like, oh, yeah, he, he was he getting knew that. But even getting. Mahomes, Mahomes sat an entire year. Willis is not going to have to sit an entire year because his skill set's completely off the charts. Mm -hmm. But you will have to cater to him. Correll is going to have to go to a really good uh, coordinator for him to have instant success because, like I said, he's volatile in the mind where Lane Kiffin does a great job of saying, hey, man, calm down, calm down, mm -hmm. calm down. Yep. Do, do this right here. Because yep. he has he has that 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 mentality that he's a he dog that to, dog you, you want to go for it. Like, like, i love it I said, my man <laughs> dropping the shoulder on nfl linebackers man that's what, like yeah. i don't want that too much but he'll do it <laughs> and, and that's what i'm saying so you have to calm him down a little because even when he throws sometimes it's like you see that i'm looking at it like if you look at the r22 from his perspective you're like oh lord don't do that don't do that and luckily he hasn't done it this year the interception he had the first one this year, like the mm -hmm. first interception he had this year, that was a bad interception. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was really like, bad. It was, it was a bad <laughs> – I was like – I said, come on, man. You're, I said, listen to, listen to Lane, man. Listen to Lane. He got oh, you. Yeah. That dude, he went crazy this weekend, though, and he showed his rushing ability in every sense this weekend. And yeah. I really like what I've seen from him, which takes us to 
prospect number three of our quarterback one of the future series. It is Mr. Kenny Pickett out of yes, Pitt, sir. 6'3", 220, fifth year senior. We'll get yep. to that. Yeah. Tell me about Kenny Pickett. Tell me what his strengths are, what his weaknesses are, and how you project him to the next level. So, easy projection. He's gonna be a ve- he's gonna be a good day one starter, one hundred percent. He's just going to. He has o- over forty five or about or forty five uh, starts. Mm-hmm. He is a fifth year senior. Yeah, so he's gonna be twenty four in June. <laughs> yeah, he's a fifth year senior. So is he has a lot of experience. On the downside of that. He's never thrown more than 13 touchdowns in a year before this, this year. year. I know. That's, you those know, like, stats don't that's look good. It's, like, it's like that Zach flag. Wilson thing. Yeah. yeah, but see, Zach Wilson even had better stats before. Yeah. He got hurt. Mm-hmm. He had better stats than Pickett before. For sure. Um, so that is that is a red flag. The late bloomer thing, sometimes that happens. The fifth-year senior thing, you're like, okay. But the the difference between – you're, you're like, okay, what's what's – He's getting it. So he's processing faster. That tells you that once he gets it, he gets it, which is great. The talent is silky smooth. I call it baby oil. Mm. <laughs> like, because he he's Derek Carr smooth. You know, like, you when you look at Derek Carr, you're like, he doesn't wow you with his arm. He doesn't wow you with his legs. He doesn't but everything wow you looks with under him. control. Yep. But Hell everything yeah. is there. He is, he is like Derek Carr to me. Um, actually, I like him a lot better than, than when Tannehill came out. Mm-hmm. So Tannehill, I think he might, Tannehill might be a better like runner, like straight line runner, but I think Pickett moves better, um, specifically in a pocket. They both have similar type arms. Like, cause, cause even Pickett, he has a, a strong arm, but it's not, it's not like strong, strong. It's, it's. Derek Carr is strong. Okay. Um, he he definitely has the accuracy, touch, and timing. Like that is definitely his his thing. Like he can he can maneuver. He can kind of get inside the pocket. You love it when you see a quarterback dip his shoulder. Mm-hmm. Like in the pocket when the pressure is coming in and it's coming here. He feels he can it. Dip his shoulder. Dip it and he step feels up. it. Mm-hmm. Yep. He can step up or avoid. And one thing I love is he never keeps the ball low like this. I love, and I don't know if I told you this, one of the, the prospects I love is DTR, Dorian Thompson Robinson for UCLA. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, you're gonna, we're, we're, we'll talk about him another day. Okay. Um, but absolutely fantastic, like foundationally. Um, one of his issues is he kind of dips the ball right here and a lot mm-hmm. of times he has this like uh he, he might click his heel a little like a, bit like a if, little wonky throwing motion yeah, and like, delivery right. yeah. before no before he sets mm-hmm. which kind of takes an extra second to set but he sometimes a lot of times he keeps the ball low which means he has to move it up come up and do this the the release is fast but those are things that you uh that picket does naturally picket mm-hmm. has that ball up just like a running back high and tight, he has his ball up and he, he's going. His eyes are always downfield. He's moving his feet and his hips are aligned. So when I say the hips are aligned, you remember the mm-hmm, the, the Dak Prescott. Yeah, <laughs> the the Dak Prescott. Prescott. <laughs> like his hips are aligned. Like if he's throwing to his left, his hips are aligned to his left. Now, he's not great throwing to his left. That's mm. just a, a fun fact about Pickett. He's not. He's so not got great a little Heineke in him. <laughs> so like, well, when I when I mean that is like it, it's you can tell it's not as how how fluid and natural he is. You can tell mm-hmm. that's not his. Like he has to work on that. Heidi can't can't do it. There's a mm-hmm. difference. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's a big difference. Oh <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's a big difference. But he's not. He's not great to his left. Like it's specifically down the field to his left. Great. I'm talking about the the if he's moving to his left, he's great. But in the pocket, in the pocket to the left, 10, 15 yards out, those are usually where his 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 ball placements are a little off. But outside of that, he places the ball perfectly. And mm-hmm. even when he does it to the left, he has his moments where it's like, wow, that's a a 15 yard out, 12 to 15 yard out. Oh, easy. On the opposite on the opposite side of the field, that's like a 35, 40 yard throw. Mm-hmm. 
you know, like from the pocket, you're right there. The distance is traveling because it's not going A to B and the speed in, that it needs to go. Like he can make the throw. He just needs to make it more consistent, consistently. I, I like Pickett a lot. And the reason why I have him above Howell and my, my guy Ritter is because he just does everything right. You know, he he does everything right. Oh, and yeah, like, I'm not like, gonna... like when I see him versus Virginia Tech last week, he, he gave yeah. it to the Hokies. My favorite thing about watching him is that the game looks like it's so slow for him. Like it looks yeah, like it yeah, comes yeah, yeah, to yeah. him so easy. He just yeah. has that. Derek Carr, to me, yeah. is like a perfect comp perfect for him comp. Yeah. because yeah. – He's not going to blow you away with physical traits, but no. he makes all the throws. He has the traits of an NFL quarterback. And being a fifth-year senior, about to be 24 years old in next June, yeah. he, he's ready to go the, the, the second you draft yeah. him. There should not be any conversation if we were to draft Kenny Pickett whether he's ready to go week one. Oh, yeah. One, like – Drafting him 100%. Like, that, that's that's not, not even a brainer because uh, – that's a no-brainer because he's ready. Um, the the fifth-year senior, you're kind of like, whoa. So you, you see the – there could be a limit in potential and, like, where he can go, but that limit is still better than half the league. So mm-hmm. I, I that's how I, I honestly feel about Pickett. The reason why I, I can't put him at one is just because that high upside is not there. Like – that that okay, I need you to do be Watson right now. I need you because Washington may actually need Deshaun Watson the way this offense and team is performing. Oh, man. We need the, somebody to put it on their yeah, back. I was just having that conversation yesterday. We haven't won. I haven't wanted to really touch on this Watson thing with all that he's got going on, but with the state of this franchise, the we fan need a base, player like that, the off-field scandal, they might need a superstar ready to step in, a young superstar. They yeah. may have to take their lumps in the media, which they're used to, and throw a bag at the show. I don't think we can I don't think we can afford it because of like so. uh, I don't think so either, this, but the optics are special. always we bad. Have legit, we have legit <laughs> problems with that, that the misconduct of, of yeah. specifically young ladies. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't do that, even though it like, wouldn't, it, it, we should be the one team who should not touch him, not, but not where this team it. currently stands. Couldn't you see us making a play for it? <laughs> that uh, it's kind of uh, I'm here, but here's the thing: he has no no trade clause, so he has to decide. Yep, he would have he gets to his wave final it. say. And who the hell would would this? Who the hell would Deshaun Watson be? Would say, "Oh yeah, I like to go to Washington." Oh yeah, David Mulligata from Athletes First. I think he's smarter than to suggest that. But first, Deshaun has to clear his name. And we can move to quarterback number four in our QB one of the future series. I believe this is a guy you call yourself a truther of. I was not a big believer of this guy, but I think he's starting to grow on me, but I'm not sure what he is yet. Let's talk about Desmond Ritter out of Cincinnati. So with Desmond Ritter, there's a lot of things that I love about him. Uh, Hold on. Sorry about that. There's a lot of things I love about Desmond Ritter. So first of all, he has over a thousand throws in college as well. He has about, just about four to five hundred rushes in college. Um, he's legit a winner. Like he will do anything to win that game. Mm-hmm. And he has, he is, it's not has the type, this is who he is. After practices at, at Cincinnati, which are really intense, right? After oh, yeah. practices, he takes his offensive linemen, he takes his uh, weapons, his running back, and everything and takes them in the film room for an hour or so to go over practice film, practice film. Love not to just hear a it. film right here, practice film. He's that guy. Not the like, game. He's like, we talking like, about he, practice. Yeah, we're I talking about it. practice, homie. Right. Like, like, he's, he goes the extra mile. He's a father. So life is beyond himself. He had, he, he's thinking about things outside of just Football. himself. Mm-hmm. Or like, uh, hey, He's not going to be caught up doing Baker Mayfield things right before the draft and running away from the cops because he's drunk in public. And everything. Nah, he has a <laughs> child at home. You get what I'm saying? Like, he's a grown man. Yes, sir. So, that though, you got to take that in there, the live arm. Like, his arm is strong and it's live. Mobile X Factor. 
That boy can use his feet, though he is a long strider. I don't like him as like a designed runner, but as a mobile quarterback, he'll 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 be able to shine running. But I don't see him as a design runner. Um, he's seen it all, man. Like he's seen it all. Like he's been he's seen it all, man. He's a, he's he's a four year a four year guy too. So he's been starting for years now. Um. There's some things that I don't like. Well, one thing I do like is he he makes every RPO look the same. And what I mean when I say that is whether he's running it, whether he's handing it, whether he's throwing it, it's it's that means it's dedication for him to do this. Because when he's handing it, right, boom, mm-hmm. he's running to the other side right here. Like he is going, like he is he he manipulates at least two DBs and two linebackers every game just by doing that. Like he's the head and shoulders above every prospect on our list at reading defenses. Mm, manipulating defense. I love to hear it. Cause we need, like, we need that. We need that. And like, so what are the cons? What are the weaknesses in his game at this point? All right. So, all right. Yeah, he I can tell. It pains. It pains you. It pains you it to say does, this. That's your, that's, that's your guy. That's your guy. <laughs> that's your that's guy. That's my guy. So the reason why I had to go drop him to even even here is because the the fundamental flaws are they're real flaws. And what I mean when I say that is there seems to be like this disconnect between his his upper body and his lower body. And what I mean to say that is. Think the opposite of the uh, not the Wayne, uh, Dak Prescott. Mm-hmm. You know how Dak probably we did a thing. We we go right here, right? Mm-hmm. He his hips are not aligned naturally. He has to adjust mm. to do that. His feet are not naturally aligned. Like even when he has a square base, he takes extra steps, false steps. He has to literally go out of his way to to get square. It's not natural for him, and. I, it's odd. It's really weird because it, you would think that, that like, okay, you've been the quarterback now, just kind of get your, your hips aligned. So that scares me, man, because little things like that, you say, okay, they can be worked on. But he knew that last year. So mm-hmm. this year, it should have been a lot better. He hasn't cleaned not. it up yet. He hasn't. He hasn't cleaned that up. And that's what kind of gets me. I'm like, I expected him to clean that up. Because if he would have cleaned that up, even if he wouldn't, even though he he may not be putting uh, picket numbers right now, if he mm-hmm. would have cleaned that up, I probably would have. I would have had him completely sold at two or three. Okay, so, I probably would. Yeah. Yep. So so what is your what is your NFL comp for him? Because mine is to me, I see Colin Kaepernick with less juice, but. A lot less juice. So a lot, yeah, a lot very, less yeah. juice. Yeah, Hell very, yeah. Very, so you know how Colin Kaepernick, that's a great comp because Colin Kaepernick, uh, Lamar Jackson does it too, is they throw the ball on a rope, on mm-hmm. a rope. They like Colin Kaepernick, he even said in the interview years ago, he said, I don't, I don't, I throw it at the wide receiver, not at the spot. But he had a strong enough arm. People don't realize how strong. Yeah, people didn't understand how strong Kaepernick's arm was. <laughs> he had a rocket. <laughs> like, he had a rocket. Like, we're talking about um, just under Mahomes and Allen. Yeah, That's it. That's it. There's no quarterback in the NFL. None besides those two have a, a stronger arm than Colin Kaepernick. So he could get away with throwing at the receiver. Ritter can do that. He has that type of arm, and he can do that. He just – he's not – He's not as like uh, he's not as uh, as switched up as cap switched up well as a runner or even as a passer. It's like he's not as natural. Mm-hmm. Cap was natural. Yeah, instinctive. Like, Hell yeah. And, and to, uh, Ritter's toesy too, so he's really toesy in the pocket. You see the little the the the, the hop. Mm-hmm. It's not just hopping at the step. It's like he'll like this. It's almost antsy where Heineke moves his feet like this. Yeah, he does that, scatters. That, <laughs> but but Ritter, he he's toesy, so he's almost antsy when it comes to that. Um, which is not a bad thing. It's it's something that it is it's it's almost like a tick. 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like when people, uh, 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 like it's 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 like a tick. Okay. I I think that that's a fair. Like he's a less athlete, lesser athlete than uh Kaepernick because Kaepernick was an elite athlete. So that's what that's a, that's a fair comp for him. Fair comp. Okay, and that takes us to our final quarterback of our top five. Your top five of the prospects coming out. We got Mr. Sam Howell out of UNC Chapel Hill, the Tar Hill. Tell yeah. me about Sam Howell. I know first thing first, like comp-wise, it is so easy to say, say Baker. Baker. Because yeah. he looks like Baker. Baker. He's built he's like, like Baker. Baker. <laughs> yeah. it's like, so it's hard for me to like not see Baker. Because Hell yeah. Because B- Baker has a rocket too, mm-hmm. and but Baker's not asked to be like when he first came to Browns that great year rookie year that he had like he he was slinging that rock they weren't running mm-hmm. the ball the way they're running right here and that's naturally who Baker is that's naturally who Howell is like mm-hmm. like Howell is um he's a gunslinger he has Hell the yeah. arm he has the arm to be a gunslinger yep. so. He's he's not like where Heineke where Heineke doesn't have the arm to be that he can be that guy. I love mm-hmm. the fit to Washington for how. I love that fit. I'm starting to see a lot of people say that they think that this is the quarterback for Washington and they think this is the guy fit. that Herney has his eyes on. So, tell me great why he fit. would fit in the offense, strengths, weaknesses and let me know if you think his ceiling is higher than Baker Mayfield. I think his ceiling is higher than Baker Mayfield. Um, and, well, I think his ceiling is because I think he's a more aggressive, even as a runner, too. Because Baker will run. But I like, like, like Sal ha- uh, Sam Howell has this toughness to him. Do you know how, like, mm-hmm. Corral has that toughness to him? Yeah. Corral's a lot better athlete, but like, I didn't, I didn't know that, I didn't know that he could scoot like that, though. This man got yeah. 500 yards this year yeah. so far, yeah, on, like, like 90 carries. Like, yeah. what? Cause and he he's he's like he doesn't have his weapon. So unlike Ole Miss, Alabama, Clemson, Oklahoma, Ohio State is when you're at a a lesser program, lesser football program, when you lose your talent, it hurts. Like mm-hmm. he lost two of his star running backs, two of his stud wide receivers, and like that's why he looked so bad at the a game one. But he was literally doing everything he everything. can right now. Man, you you gotta pressing. go for that. The the things that I don't like about Sam, uh, I'm a, before I talk about how everything I love about Sam, these are things I don't like about Sam. He predetermines his reads and he sticks to it sometimes. Why, like versus Virginia Tech, this last game, I posted a, a picture of him doing a, a screen pass. Right, <laughs> the defensive end was clearly in the backfield, but yeah. like he was on autopilot. He was like, huh, huh, huh. like a machine. And it you was, know, what it was saying? a pick six. Pick yep. six, a screen pass, wide receiver screen pass is pick six. Didn't hit anybody else's hands. It hit directly the defensive <laughs> uh, defender's hand because he was on auto- autopilot. He does that at, at least a few times a game. And I'm not talking about necessarily putting the ball in danger, just the autopilot and mm-hmm. um, and then the nonchalantness about it. So the, you can tell it's, it's also the, her, his familiarity with the, the playbook, but I, I that that kind of scares me a little bit because it's kind of like, hey, bro, you need to you need to like snap out of it. Um, he also latches on to receivers way too long, like way too long. It, it you need to be able to once you see something is eliminated, go to your other reads, right? And he can move through his reads, but it's just sometimes he's not quick with it. And in the NFL, man, not that, <laughs> that's not gonna work, homie. Like. That's that's not gonna that's not gonna work. But UNC doesn't do a lot of dump off passes either, like a whole lot of checkdowns. Like they're going for it. So I think that the fit for Washington is is so good because Scott does a great job of having like uh outs, little outs for quarterbacks, little dump off passes. Like hey, this and this is not there. Don't be scared to to do this. Like just let go of that ball. Um, and like we have the weapons that would really make him go for it. So he doesn't, he's not looking for, um, a Chase Claypool, a DK Metcalf. Nah, like he wants people to, to fast, 
to go. Mm -hmm. track, he can, track team around him. <laughs> he wants a track team. And, oh, yeah. and that's and that's what we have. So we have that type of ability, that type of talent. Heineke doesn't have that type of ability to to really to really get all that going. Mm -hmm. That's a great fit for the positive. When I say that boy got a rocket, man, how can throw that ball everywhere, every inch, every corner, and like he'll do it with with no problem. And the deep ball is beautiful. Beautiful, <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. He he can layer it. He knows how yep. to. He can. He knows how to like touch it. He knows how to zip it. He knows how to to get it through, over, and around. And it's in a, a tight window. Thing. Hell yeah, tight window. So he's the best at that in this in this in this class. Like he's better at that than Pickett, than Willis and Coral on or Corral on a on a consistent level of being able to do that to every throw, right? But he's not as gifted as Willis. He's not as full of potential as Coral. So it's kind of like, okay, you got to knock him down a little bit. Because as much as he's he does that for throwing-wise mm -hmm. on a consistent level, his mind doesn't move as quick as theirs. Okay. His mind doesn't move as quick as theirs. And your mind is a terrible thing to waste. Like, very, very, especially in this league where you have to be able to process fast because yeah. like, if you're not able to process the fastest, you have to have the most special set of athletic traits to be able to thrive yep. in this league. And that rounds out our top five for this. I have a question for you now. So now we done done yeah. Malik Willis, Matt Corral, uh -huh. Kenny Pickett, Desmond Ritter, and Sam Howe. Who has the best shot at being the first quarterback taken on October 20th, 2021? Who has the best shot right now as being the first quarterback off the board? Because what I'm being told is that this is a weak quarterback class. So <laughs> it's not it's not a weak quarterback class in terms of talent. It's a weak quarterback class in terms of like there's no certainty. There's no lock at number one. There's like there, everybody's deeply flawed somehow, some way. Like some even Corral, like mm -hmm. he he he's a lot of fundamental issues. Um, I think Corral's probably the the more lock to for number one. Um, right. and then there's a guy that I didn't mention who people love that I'm not crazy about. Uh Carson Strong. Out of Nevada, yeah, yeah. A lot of people yeah, like him. A lot of people like him because they people fall in love with that arm. But if I'm gonna knock Sam Howell off uh, the, the speed and latching on to receivers and the, the speed of like going through reads, mm -hmm. then Carson Re uh, Carson Strong is like, like boom, 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 way below Sam Howe. So if I knock Sam Howe from number three to number five, then I got to knock Carson to, to like number seven. <laughs> right, right. And we're going <laughs> to definitely hit on Carson Strong. So the answer was, you think right now, as it stands, Corral is probably the best shot to go first, right? Yeah. Yeah, because I see yeah. I see people dropping. It's way too early for mock drafts, but in the early the early returns, I've seen, I've seen Hal going at like 28 and stuff, and I'm like, yeah. whoa. So that we should have a shot to have one of these dudes, which leads to my final question of the day, and I know you got to roll. Which one of these top five prospects that we've discussed so far is the best scheme fit for Washington and Scott Turner's offense? It's uh, Sam Howe. Okay. Sam Howe. But I also feel like that Kenny Pickett is too. Mm -hmm. Because Kenny Pickett can he, – he's so experienced, he can kind of just jump in there. But I think that – I think the best fit – the best fit would probably, probably be – um Sam Howe because I like how even as a runner too like even though he's not like a runner sometimes in this offense you're gonna need to get those wheels going mm -hmm. so I think yep. it's I think it's how I like okay, pick I like it more it. I like pick it more but I think it's how Yep. Okay, Sam. How I like that answer, and I like the answer for selfish reasons too, because our name have may have some type of wolf in it, and the quarterback's <laughs> last name being Howell. And when your team is called the Wolves hey. already, that yeah. is lit. But Let's thank go. you again for coming to kick it with me. I love this quarterback talk, and I cannot wait to have some more coming. Go ahead and plug your Twitter handle, and let's get out of here for the day, man. Just search Michael Haas, H A A S. I'm there, man. 
Oh, yeah, man. And as always, rambling with Rio, rambling about Washington. See me stirring it up on the timeline, but it's all good vibes, man. At the end of the day, we love we all love this crazy ass organization. But until next <laughs> time, hell to the nameless football team. Deuces. And for you.